In this video, we'll see how permutation tests work and then have a deeper look at the test called Permanova. Statistical tests that are based on permutations can be seen as a subset of non parametric tests because they do not assume any distribution. To see how a simple permutation test works, let's consider the following example where we like to test if there is a difference in the systolic blood pressure between young and middle-aged people that are here denoted as groups A and B. Let's first plot the data and calculate the mean systolic blood pressure for the two groups. The mean systolic blood pressure of the four individuals in the young group is 124, and 129 of the four individuals in the middle-aged group. We've now used an unpaired t-test to see if there is a significant difference in the mean systolic blood pressure between the two groups. The equation for calculating the t-statistic for an unpaired t-test that assumes equal variance looks like this when the two groups have an equal sample size. Let's plug in our numbers for the means, the variances, and the sample sizes. If we do the math, we see that the t-statistic is negative 2.74. To compute the p-value, we use the t-distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the total sample size minus 2. Since we have a sample size of 8, our degrees of freedom is therefore equal to 6. We then use a statistical software to calculate the area to the left-hand side of negative 2.74 and to the right-hand side of positive 2.74, since we here use a two-sided test. The corresponding p-value is therefore the sum of the area of these two tails, which in this case is equal to about 0 0.034. This value represents our p-value. If the null hypothesis is true, which states that the two population means are equal? The probability of observing a t-statistic or more extreme is here about 3.4%. It is therefore quite unlikely that the difference we have observed in our sample is due to chance, since the p-value in this example is less than our significance level of 0 0.05. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean systolic blood pressure is significantly higher in group B compared to group A. We will now calculate the p-value that is instead based on permutations. Let's first create a table of our data. Let's also place the t-statistic, which we calculated based on the t-test, up here as a reference. We will now perform multiple permutations of the data. This can be done by, for example, randomly rearranging the order of the group labels in this column. If we would randomly shuffle around the A's and B's, we might get the following sequence which will generate the following two random groups. If we would compute the t-statistic based on this new dataset, we would get the value of about 0 0.37. Then we shuffle the a's and b's again, so that we get the following new dataset. Calculating the t-statistic based on this new dataset results in a value of about negative 1.5. Then we shuffle again and compute the t-statistic which in this case happened to be equal to zero. If we would continue this process, we could, for example, compute 1000 t statistics. The more iterations we do, the better precision of the p value we will get. Note that with this particular permutation, we happen to get the t statistic that was actually more extreme than the t statistic from the original data. The p-value of the permutation test is equal to the number of times the absolute values of the t-statistics from the permutations are greater than or equal to the absolute value of the t-statistic from the original data divided by the number of permutations we have done. If we take the absolute value of these numbers, then we can count how many t-statistics from the permutation tests that are greater than or equal to 2.74. In our example, 48 out of 1000 permutation tests resulted in an absolute value that was greater than or equal to 2.74, which gives a p-value of 0 
This is quite close to the p-value from the original t-test, which was 0 0.034. If we would make a histogram of all the 1000 t-statistics from the permutation tests, that will actually reflect the distribution of the t-statistics that we would expect to see if the null hypothesis is true. If there is no difference in blood pressure between the two groups, we would expect that the t-statistics would be distributed like this due to chance. If we would place cutoff lines at negative 2.74 and at positive 2.74, then we see that we have 48 t-statistics that are equal to or more extreme than the original t-statistic. We have previously computed 1000 t-statistics, but the method actually works in the same way if instead used the difference between the means. We then compare the original difference between the two sample means with the differences obtained from the permutations. We then sum how many differences that are equal to or less than negative 5 or greater than positive 5 and divide by the number of permutations. We will get the exact same p-value if we use the differences between the means instead of the t-statistics. If we have three or more groups, we can instead use ANOVA to test if at least one group significantly differs from the other groups. Similar to before, we can compute the p-value of the ANOVA based on permutations. We therefore first start to calculate the f-statistic from the ANOVA based on the original data. Then we compute, for example, f-statistics from 100,000 permutations where we randomly shuffle the group labels. The p-value is then simply the proportion of f-statistics from the permutations that are larger than or equal to the original f-statistic from the ANOVA. For this example data, 134 f-statistics from the permutations happen to be equal to or greater than the original f-statistic, which results in a p-value of 0.00134. We will now have a look at the permanova, but before we discuss this test, we first need to understand the difference between ANOVA and MANOVA. Suppose that we would like to use a statistical test to check if there is a significant difference in the systolic blood pressure between the two groups A and B. Since we only had measurements of one variable of two groups in this case, we can use a simple t-test. If you like to check if there is a difference between three or more groups, we can use ANOVA, which will tell if at least one group significantly differs from the other groups. Suppose that we now like to know if there is a significant difference in both the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure between groups A and B. When we have two or more dependent variables, but only two groups to compare, we can use the corresponding multivariate t-test called the Hotelling's t-square. When we have three or more groups to compare, we can use the multivariate version of ANOVA, which is called MANOVA. However, note that ANOVA and MANOVA also work on two groups. If you like to learn how ANOVA and MANOVA work, I have videos about those methods on my homepage. In a video about MANOVA, we discussed all its assumptions. One problem with MANOVA is that it relies on several assumptions that might be hard to fulfill. Permutational multivariate analysis of variance can be seen as the non parametric alternative to MANOVA. PERMANOVA can therefore be used if you do not fulfill the underlying assumptions in MANOVA. However, PERMANOVA still assumes that the two groups have about the same spread or dispersion in the data, but the test is quite robust to differences in spread, especially if the groups have equal sample sizes. Permanova is often used on count data, which is usually highly skewed and might contain lots of zeros. Suppose that we have the following data set where we like to see if there is a significant difference in the diastolic and the systolic blood pressure between groups A and B. If we plot the data, we can see that the two groups are quite separated. You also see that the two groups have about the same spread. 
we can calculate the so-called centroid of group A, which is simply the average values of the two variables, and the centroid of group B. We will now use Permanova to test if these two centroids have a significantly different location. In other words, if we account for both the diastolic and systolic blood pressure, is there a significant difference between groups A and B? Permanova starts by first calculating the distances between the data points. In this example, we will use the Cleidian distance, but you can use other distance measures that fit your problem. For example, to calculate the Cleidian distance between data point 3 and data point 6, we can use the same formula as we use to calculate the longest side of a right triangle where we plug in the difference in the diastolic blood pressure and the difference in the systolic blood pressure. If we do the math, we see that the distance is equal to 5. If we would calculate the distances between all data points, we could create the following distance matrix. For example, with this matrix, we can see that the distance between data point 2 and 4 is about 3.6 which is the distance between these two points. We then sum all the squared distances, which means that we square all these values and then sum these squared distances. If we divide this sum by the total sample size, which is here 8, then we get an SST value of 199, which can be seen as the total sum of squares. Note that this value is the same as the sum of the squared distances from the overall centroid to all the data points. The within group sum of squares is calculated like this, where the delta is equal to 1 if the two data points i and j belong to the same group and 0 otherwise. This basically means that we only sum the square distances between the data points in group A and add that to the sum of the square distances between the data points within group B. In other words, we sum the square of these values and divide by the sample size within the groups, which is here 4. That will give us a within groups sum of squares of 42.5. Note that this value is the same as the sum of the square distances from the group centroids to all the data points within the corresponding group. The between groups sum of squares is simply the total minus the within. We can then calculate the approximate F statistic like this, where P is the number of groups we have. Let's place the approximate F statistic we just calculated up here. Then we do the same calculations again, but where we randomly shuffle the group labels and compute, for example, 1000 F statistics based on the permutations. Then we compute the P value by dividing the number of F statistics that are equal to or larger than the original F statistic. The p-value is here equal to 0.031. Note that the p-value will vary a bit in every simulation because we randomly shuffle the group labels, which might result in a different p-value if we compute 1000 permutations again. Since the p-value is less than the general significance level of 0.05, we can conclude that group A is significantly different from group B when we account for both the diastolic blood pressure and the systolic blood pressure. This was the end of this lecture about tests based on permutations. Thanks for watching.